Hi folks, so the question we have in front of us here today guys is from the 2017 Higher Level Junior Cert paper and it is the question 5 on that paper on transformation geometry. So it says here the figure shows the logo for a garage. Uh, the logo is subject to transformations in the following order. Central symmetry from P to P1, axial symmetry from P1 to P2, translation from P2 to P3 and then rotation about point O until P3 reaches the line OL. Uh, a, draw the given figure and determine the image of the logo under each of the above transformations. Okay, uh, so looking here, guys, sorry, uh, looking here, uh, we can obviously see the image. It's obviously generally a circle that has a radius, uh, diameter 56 or radius of 28. Then we kind of have this arc here to the side, okay, uh, that is has a radius also of 40. The gap between the center line and up here is 32, so it's 16 up and 16 down. And then we can see the point P here. That line there is going to guide us where we go 16 up when that comes into the center that's going to guide us here to draw this point and at that point there we connect it to p and perpendicular to that line there through the center is this line and then that will kind of guide us with this line here okay so there's a little bit of awkwardness in actually drawing this and I'll imagine the hardest parts of this is obviously doing the central symmetry axial rotations and just understanding how it's going to twist and so forth okay so uh, we're going to start that there now guys and we're going to start obviously with central symmetry from P to P1 okay <clears throat> so with that in mind guys I have just zoom out there I have a question set up here where I have the image drawn and I've located my various points P1 P2 is down here P3 is here and the line OL here okay and as we can see there then i've kind of just written a little guide up here okay i just find that helpful okay so i don't have to be jumping over and back to the question uh obviously on an exam day you'll have the sheet in front of you so from p to p1 i have to do central symmetry okay also guys when i did this object you'll see here i've actually labeled as well so outside of p i've labeled the center of the circle here c okay i've labeled an important point i'm going to use to help me a here okay and then b here as well the reason i label b is because from the center to b that is a distance of 40 millimeters to show you there and that 40 millimeters okay is going to help me obviously once i have my center just be able to do this portion of it here okay uh the next little bit then uh, the reason i did a is because i know a connects to p okay so obviously uh, above C then is A which is 16 millimeters above it uh, but once I have A I can connect it to P and what's important about that is once I have that line I can go perpendicular to that line through the center which will help me find that line in there okay very important and then from there I'll be able to connect down here or at this point I'll actually use that point there and I'll be able to connect up this line then as well okay so that's kind of how I'm going to guide it there is other ways and other points you could get to help you I could have used this point I could have used this point okay as well it's just the way I'm going to be able to complete it okay so starting off central symmetry from P to P1 so our first step is we need to find our central symmetry point it's going to connect P to P1 and I'm going to bisect that line right there from P to P1 just pick a distance greater than halfway above and below the line there we have it <clears throat> now having done that connect up the points right in there I have my point uh, for the sake of today because I've used C already I'm just going to call this S okay central symmetry uh, so through that point S, I'm going to locate the rest of my points, okay? I've already got P1, I know where that is. So what I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to find C, the image of C under central symmetry. So through S, I'm going to connect C. And I know it's going to go there somewhere, okay? Uh, I'll also do A while I'm at it. I think it's going to be out here somewhere yeah should be far enough just trying to keep it neat and tidy and then b it's going to go further all right so somewhere out along there is my points now what i'm going to do is because i have the image of p1 already i'm going to start with c which is the center and just making sure yeah i'm happy with that so starting with there to the center i'm going to mark it out it's on this one don't get confused with your lines. So technically now that there is C1. The 
exact same now with A. So that will be A1. And finally, with B. It's all the way out here. And you can see here, I'm going to have to extend that out just a touch further. It's from the center to the B. There we go. And I've now found B1. Okay, so in drawing that, I can take the center of my original circle back here, which is radius of 28, and using my new center, I can draw that, and that should be the same distance to P, and we can see there it's working out fine, so I know I'm accurate at the moment. I'm going to draw in that circle. Okay. And I'm also, I have the radius length from C to B, which is the same as from C to B1 here. So I will draw on that as well. Just that arc, because I know it's an arc, radius 40. So it's something like that at this moment in time. And I also know then that A connects to C. Okay, so at this point here, with A, I can draw in that line there, A connecting to C that way. Okay, so I haven't done that, and I'd imagine it actually should be vertical. Okay, because it's just been flipped. So we'll just make sure. Yeah, happy with that. It's also going to turn out vertical. Okay, and I'd imagine P to C should actually be horizontal. Hopefully this works out. Yep, perfect. And out to B as well. So I know I'm actually quite accurate there so far. Now at this point, having found P to A, I can connect those because they're connected up here. So P to A connects up there like that. And then perpendicular to that, going through the center, okay, is my other line. So a little bit of sliding set squares here. So I'm going to rotate it around and then perpendicular. There we go. And that is going to be the opening of the mouth, okay, of the logo. And then somewhere up here is a point, okay, which is this guy here or this one. So I can find either or, uh, just to show you there. It's very simple. Now, if I wanted to find this guy, because I have the circle already, connect it through S. Okay, so that one's going to be a little bit awkward there. So I might actually find this one will be a little bit better. Because I don't know, is it here, is it here, is it here, where exactly is it? So I'll actually find this one. Figure out the problem as you work through it. That one's working out a lot better. And there I have it. I have that point there. And I know from that point, it's parallel to this line here. Okay, from A to B. Or A to P1. A1 to P1, I should say. So parallel to that. From there. And there I have it. And you can see then that it was matching up up here. So I'll start heavying in the detail here now. So it's just a little bit of working out, obviously, in um, these kind of questions, guys. All right, just a little bit of working out. So from there to there. So that's the opening of the mouth. And then I know from A, if I think back to here, from that point there where it cuts through, so that's a point here. And then from A as well, it goes prop, uh, or sorry, uh, horizontally back in this direction. So like that. So that'll give me this bit here. And then guide it with this line here. So there we have it. Okay. And at this point now, it's simply a case of drawing in my arcs. So just going to heavy those in with the dark. From C. The top off there. Just going to heavy into detail that's important. Okay, and then finally the arc here at the outside. And there we have it, okay? That there is the first one done, central symmetry, okay?
done. Okay, and what we've got is the image, and then you can see here it has been flipped over, kind of inverted. Okay, the next one now we have to do is from P1 to P2, we have to do that by axial symmetry. So in axial symmetry, what we're going to do is the exact same almost method, only everything is going to go across an axis rather than through one point. So from P1 to P2, so you can see there here there is actually a bit of a distance. So join P1 to P2. Once again, bisect that line. Pick a distance bigger than halfway. Halfway is roughly here, so hopefully that'll do it. P1 to P2. And there we have it. Connect that up, only this time I'm actually going to draw on my axis as much as I think I'll need. Okay, so that's where my axis line will be going like that. And I think I'm only going to need over to about here, I'm guessing. So there's my axis line. Okay, I know it connects over here, but I don't think I'm going to need that much because it's all going to come down perpendicular to that. Okay, so there's my axis. i will write that in. And now, the next point, what we're going to do is we're going to bring all those points by axial symmetry over to the opposite side, okay? So parallel to P1 to P2, which is perpendicular to the axis. So project those points down now again, the ones that I need. And we'll start building it, okay? So starting with the center point, which is right here. I'm trying to be as accurate as possible. I know it comes out just a little bit further than P2. Uh, in relation to A... It's going to be a little bit shorter because this thing is just going to be flipped. So for A1 to find A2, I'd imagine it's somewhere up along here. And then just switch up my set squares there. For B1, which is now going to become B2, uh, it's going to be somewhere similar about there, I'd imagine. Okay, so same thing, I'm going to take the distances. P1 is already found, so if I want to find C1 opposite, which would be C2, so take the distance from C1 to the axis like that and mark it out the opposite side. Okay, then for A1, take the same distance from the axis to A1 to find A2. Okay, have to extend that out a little bit further. And then finally, same for B1. Probably have to go a bit further with this one as well, left myself short. So for B1, extend out the line a touch further, and the same with A1. Okay, once again, label the points. So this would be A2, this would be C2, and then this would be B2. Okay, so once again, I'm going to start kind of uh, drawing in my object as best I can. I have the center. And I know the center to P is my radius, but I'll take from up here and just make sure that it's still working out the same below, hopefully. So with my C, that should connect to P with the same radius. Yep, and it's doing that, so I'm happy with that. I know I'm accurate so far. Okay, quite happy with that. And I know then as well from the center to B is the radius of this arc out here on the outside, which was originally 40. I'll just check it from the one up here. Hopefully we're still accurate. Accuracy in these questions can come out a little bit of times, so put it on C. Yeah, and it's going through B2, so I know that's right as well. And somewhere down along there then is going to be, obviously the line's going in straight like that. Now, I know I have kind of uh, the vertical line going through up here, which connects A and C. So it's the same thing here, so I can find that line here. So from A2 to C2, so that one is actually giving me a little guide. I can connect up that line. And now I have that line there. I know perpendicular to that line is P1 to C1 to B1. So hopefully, P to C to B, I think they're all connecting, just be sure. Yep, and we can see here that they are all connecting and therefore we kind of have our axes of our circle, okay, our various quadrants. So just pull that down a little bit further there so you can see it a bit better, guys, sorry. So as we can see there, perpendicular to each other. So that is actually working out quite well, still at this moment in time. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect P1 to A1. So in this case, P2 to A2. And I know then that perpendicular to that, through the center, perpendicular to the line I've just done, through the center. 
So we're rotating it around there. There's another line going that way. And I can actually start to heavy in a bit of this detail now. So that's the first bit heavied in. And I know this heavy is in a certain portion, certain distance down. It's about 16, so I could mark it. Or I could just find the point out here, or this one. Okay, as we can see, these two points up here. So I'm actually going to find this one because I have that line on the line A1 to C1, which is now A2 to C2. So it's going to help me find a point up here. So I'm going to use that one actually to help me out in this case. So from this point up here, going to go, oh yeah, sorry, I was thinking of central symmetry there for a second. Parallel, or should I should say perpendicular to my axis from that point, and where it cuts through the line down here, I can see that, and there we have it. From that point right there, I am now going to go perpendicular to this line here. So I haven't connected those up. I should say parallel. I haven't connected those up. There is the mouth of my kind of spanner shape. So there we go. Now I can see where it was actually finishing. Okay. Now the next thing is also from this point here and this point here, I know it goes parallel to this line, connecting P2 to B2. It's kind of giving me a guide there of these portions. Now I can heavy in these bits. Okay, and then finally, I'm just going to switch out my compass here and heavy in the circle. So everything at this moment in time is working out okay. Accuracy is not stay, is staying quite good. Just always referencing it from the previous one beforehand. Okay, to make sure I'm happy. So on these questions, guys, it's just important to try and be as accurate as possible as you're going along the question. When it comes to circles and bits like that, it can get a little bit trickier. Okay, so there we go. Uh, we've now done our uh, central symmetry, and now we've done our axial symmetry. And sometimes they're the ones that can actually, I'm just going to take off the axial one up here. Uh, sometimes them ones are the ones that can actually go kind of a little bit out of shape and so forth, okay? Now the next one we have to do is a translation from P2 to P3. Okay, so a translation is one of the, one of the easier kind of uh, transformation geometry um, parts. So all we're going to do is we're going to connect the line from P2 to P3. I'm going to set that distance on my compass. Okay, just have that done and have it ready. So I'm going to take the distance from P2 to P3. Have that distance ready on my compass, as you can see there, P2 to P3. Let's make sure. There we go. So I have that distance on my compass. That is set. And what I'm going to do is all of the points that I've been using, uh, A, B, and C, I'm going to go parallel to P2, P3. Parallel to that line there. So from A2, somewhere out along that, like it's moving along train tracks in the same direction, is going to be A3, C3, and B3. And once again, we'll use the rest of the points that we need to kind of guide us to complete the question. So I haven't found this distance here, P2 to P3, just make sure I'm happy. Yep, so to find A3, I'm going to go along here, to find C3, putting it on C2, it's going to be here, and then the same with B. There we have it. So, A3, uh, C3, and remember it's the same image, it's just going to move across the page, and finally B3. And just making sure then that everything connects up. I know P3, C3, and B3 should all connect up as a straight line. And they are. So that's still good. And then perpendicular to that is the line C2, A3. Or C3, A3. Next up my... Okay, just about, out by about half a mil. 
So there we go. Taking the distance from back here. Should still work out. So C3 to P3. Yeah. Make sure it's right there. Yep, yeah, there we go. Drawing my circle. There we have it. And then I'm also going to draw in my arc out to P3. So that's what I'm going to need there. And then from <clears throat> A3 to P3, I know that connects up that way. And perpendicular to that, true C, it's going to be another point along there. Uh, so that's going to be the mouth opening of the kind of spanner. And then to find that point here again, I'll just bring up this parallel. There we have it. I've now found that point there right there. And that is parallel to the line P3 to A3. So I haven't found that. Kind of got the mouth opening of the spanner there, so I'll heavy him in. Okay, and then parallel to the line P3 to B3. From very important, that's why I have the axis then kind of the circle here at this point here. Extend the line out and the exact same at A3. And there we have it. Heavy that in, heavy that in, and once again, just heavy in the circles and the arcs. So Okay, there we have it. That is the uh, translation part done. So tick that there. And finally, they often leave this part until the very, very end is where we are going to rotate about O. Okay, so you can see I've kind of gone in here. I'll just move that O and call it there. So O is right here. We want to rotate the object, okay, about O, okay, until it hits, until P3 hits the line OL. Okay, so this part can often be tricky and it can be thrown in different ways where sometimes we don't have the rotation point and we have to find it. In this case, they've given us the rotation point, they've given us the line OL, and I have to rotate it until P3 kind of hits the line OL. Okay, so I'm going to be rotating anti clockwise. So backwards. If you think of a clock, so P3 until it hits OL. So P3 rotates. So technically, where it hits the line OL, right there, I have now found P4, right there, okay? And somewhere along that, then from P4, if you think this object is going to be rotating like this, I have C4 and B4 as well. So I'm going to rotate them now while I have the chance. So somewhere out there is C4, and then from here to B3, somewhere out along there is going to be B4, okay? Might actually be, I'm just thinking, I think it might actually be further up. Sometimes it can be hard to visualize where these are going to be, so I'll like just extend these parts on a little bit, okay? Uh, I'll also actually rotate while I'm at it. I'm going to do the same with A3, which is there, and somewhere up there is going to be A4, okay? And having done that now, what I can do is I can take the distances from P3 to C3, okay? And let's see how this works out. I haven't done this yet, but we'll just see. Take this distance, and because I know where P4 is, yeah, that should work. I'll just check it out now in a second. So I'm actually gonna take the distance, okay? I'm gonna use the measurements that are already on this object and help and use them to guide me on where the points are up here. So the first one I'm actually, I'll actually try and find is the distance from P3 to uh, B3. So I'm going to take the distance there. So that distance there, right there, 
as you can see I have it marked there on my compass okay and I know that distance there has to be the same as the distance up here so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to describe an arc okay and as you can see this is why it's important and this is where I want it to be certain okay I'm also going to as you can see here that's kind of gone through my arc in two places it's gone through here for the B3 arc it's gone through here and it's going to go through up here as well and the question we have to figure out is which one is the one that we use so I'm just going to extend that arc on further up there okay and it's kind of touching at two points there it's touching here and it's touching up here okay and just want to be sure okay uh, which one it is so the next one I'm actually going to find here is the one from P3 to A3 Let's see how this one works out so I'm going to take that distance there and I'll go up to my P4 and I want to find where that cuts through my arc okay and it's probably going to cut it in both places once again so it's cutting it there and if I was to extend on that arc at the top there we go and as we can see it's cutting it here and it's cutting it here okay I'm just thinking which one would be more correct and finally the next one I'll actually do is the distance from P3 to C3 and same thing going to find out where it cuts on that arc and once again it's probably going to cut it at two places and here we have it yeah and this one actually should help me find it and I'll explain why in a second right folks so just on that one there that can be a little bit tricky I'm wondering which ones are the correct points okay so as you can see here when I took the distance from say P3 to B3 and came up here to P4 the question was was it this one or was it this one likewise then with um, C3 was it this one or was it this one and then the same with A3 this one or this one okay now all of them will give you a correct image okay as it has been technically rotated but which one is the actual right one that we need for this answer and the question and the actual answer is it's these points up here and this takes a little bit of visualization but if you think of a clock as it rotates around it's not going to stay kind of lower as it rotates around it's actually going to twist okay because basically this object here is going to go like this and it's going to twist like that so as it rotates about oh it's going to come up here and it's going to twist up like that therefore the ones that we actually need are the ones up here okay but that's why putting in these down here guys it was literally a case of kind of working it out and trying to help you visualize which one is the correct one so I know I don't need these ones it's actually these ones up here so now I'm going to label those so this one is B4 I know this is C4 in here and I know this should be A4 here okay so connect all of those up and see how accurate we are because uh, I know P3 connected all the way to B3 and true that was the C so if I connect B there and we'll see how accurate we are my accuracy is not too bad probably out about a half a mil but we try and make it work there we go and perpendicular to that should C, uh, C4 and A4 should connect up so we'll see how close we are yeah once again it's not too bad once again probably out about half a mil I'm going to put in that's my kind of axis then of my circle okay uh, come back here and I know the distance from C3 to P3 is my radius therefore the distance from C4 to P4 should be my radius as well and it's not too bad yeah I'm happy with that once again and then I have an arc from C4 up to B4 up here and there's my arc at the top and it's literally a case now of being able to draw that in so I'm going to connect A4 to P4 perpendicular to that through the center it's kind of the mouth opening of the spanner and then what I want to find is this guy here so very important or this guy either or I'll actually find him because I have the line so I'll actually make it a bit easier so rotating about O and the one I'm trying to find here is this guy right here okay So rotate him around and there we have it that is that point there 
okay and that is going to be parallel to this line here a4 to p4 that will give me the mouth opening okay so there's the mouth opening of the kind of spanner logo Just heavy in this bit here and what's very very important about finding that is I can now go parallel to my line here I should do it this way <coughs> visualizer is getting in the way so there we have it and at this point extend that out to the arc and the same from A4 and then just heavy in the detail. So that one, and that one, then heavy in the circle and the arc. So a little bit in that question there, guys, a little bit tricky, um, especially just on the rotation part and understanding which bits you actually have to heavy in. So just heavy in this there. And then finally, heavy in my arc at the back. There you have it. That is the 2017 transformation geometry question completed, guys. Uh, final part done there. Rotation about O until P3 hits the line OL, okay? Um, tricky enough, uh, especially there kind of on the last part and just making sure that you understood which one you had to use. It wasn't this bit down here, okay? It was actually this one up here, because as I said, imagine as this twists about, okay, think of the back end here, okay, the back portion of this logo, okay, of the spanner, all right? This portion shouldn't still be down here. As it rotates, it shouldn't just rotate like that. It's going to rotate and twist, if you think of it, okay? Because the whole object is going to twist, all right? Think of it as you twist it in real life as well. That's the way to think of it there, okay? So as this rotates around, it's going to twist as well, okay? Um... If you ended up with this one, you'd still have shown the correct method, but it might have been in the wrong position, so you would lose a few marks there on that. Uh, outside of that, guys, I uh, hope you found that helpful. That is the question completed. Okay.